Now, as an example, let's take up a longer chain, right? So this is basically five elements, A, B, C, D, and E. The numbers given there are basically the delays through each one of those. And the question that we are interested in is, what is the optimum pipeline right, that I can do over here in order to get the best possible time period? Okay. Now, of course, one possibility that I have is to simply say, put a register everywhere. Right. And yes, this is valid. What is the time period that I have corresponding to this? Once I have done this pipelining, it's going to be max of each of the individual elements is equal to 20. Okay. On the other hand, I could also have a slightly simpler solution or rather a different solution. Where let's say instead of putting in five registers of that sort, I only put in two registers, one over here and one over here. Okay. Now what happens to the critical path? It's either going to be this 15, 20 or this 8 plus 12, 20. Once again, T is equal to max of 15, 20 and 20, it's equal to 20. Right? Both of these are valid pipelines. Right? All that we are saying is given the fact that C had such a large delay compared to other units over there, you probably did not really need to you know, do further pipelining between A and B and between D and E. Right? Just having this register between B and C and C and D was probably sufficient for what you needed over here. Okay? One thing, of course, what happens if we do it one step before that, then basically what we'll have is, in this case, I will have 15 over here and 40 over here, right? This is typically what we would call an unbalanced pipeline, right? Whereas if I add this, then I cannot really call this a completely balanced pipeline because all the three stages are not exactly the same delay. But in this case, it is the best possible breakup that I can have because I can clearly look at C and say that I could not have got my critical path below 20, right? And anything that allows me to reach a critical path of 20 time units is pretty much optimal in this case. It may not be properly balanced, but is at least optimal for the given problem. Now, what happens if we take a more complicated data flow graph, right? So one thing is I'm going to look at something called a DAG, right? So what's a DAG? A directed acyclic graph, right? And DAGs are generally very important in the context of studying uh, signal processing kind of graphs because they are very common and, you know, a lot of different signal processing applications do have this kind of behavior. In this case, and so why is it called a DAG? Because if you look at the edges, you will find that there are no directed cycles anywhere, right? So, by the way, one mistake over here, uh, pardon this, this should be E and this should be F, you know, just so that they have different names. But yeah, I, I think I have this error through the next few pictures. I haven't been able to, I haven't corrected it yet. Sorry about that. Uh, I mean, the important point over here, of course, is that, you know, so even though I have, for example, B, E, C, right? This is not really a loop, right? Why? Because B to E, yes, E to C, yes, but C to B is actually not an edge. It is B to C that is the edge, right? C to B is not an edge in this case. So anyway, that is something that we had discussed earlier in the context of graphs. What we are going to, uh, so effectively, in other words, what I have got over here is a directed acyclic graph, right? And let's assume that every node as t equal to 1. Right? So my question is going to be what is the critical path through this graph? Okay, What is the longest path that I have? And if I ask that way then effectively what you can see is that you know there are, is for example a path which goes like this 
which has a total delay of one one plus one plus one plus one right so this has a delay of four time units right but is this the longest if you look carefully at it you will realize that it's not right what i can actually have is something even longer which basically could go like this a to b b to e e to c c to f f to d right and if i look at the critical the total time of that path essentially what it's going to be is t is equal to six time units right and this is pretty much the longest because there are only six nodes in the graph so you know i can't really expect to have a delay more than six without passing through some node more than once which is not allowed because no cycles are allowed over here right so t is equal to six is clearly the critical path okay so now comes the question how can i reduce this and what kind of pipelining can i do right and the first question that i might ask over here is basically something like could i just go ahead and you know for example can i just do this right is this okay to just put one delay element over here right and here you need to sort of think carefully about what is happening right look at it from the point of view of d right now d is receiving some inputs from c and f right f in turn is receiving inputs from c and e uh, c is receiving inputs from e and b etc etc right we can go backwards over here right the point is that whatever value that d computes is based on you know ultimately some samples that are flowing through the system now i have assumed that all of the maybe cd ef are some kind of time invariant hardware units so there's no problem with you know its behavior changing over time but on the other hand if i just put this delay element you know this register over here effectively what i have is something a of n that is produced over here the output of this will become a of n minus 1 it's delayed by one sample But what goes over here, on the other hand, remains as a of n goes as a of n itself. Okay. So the input that has gone to b is a of n minus one. The input that is going to e is a of n, right? And suddenly I have changed the behavior of my system. Right. I no longer have exactly the same behavior that I started with. Supposing I wanted to take a filter x of n, put it through this multiply multiply add right and let's say that i decide to just put one delay element over here right? now what is the behavior effectively what what i have is at this point i have h0 into x of n at this point i have h1 into x of n minus 1 but what i have over here is h0 x of n minus 1 which means that what i get out of this is h0 x of n minus 1 plus h1 x of n minus 1 what should it have been according to the original thing what i had was this was h0 x of n this was h1 x of n minus 1 and what was being produced over here was h0 x of n plus h1 x of n minus 1. Right? You will notice that these are fundamentally different. Right? The transfer function is different, the behavior is different. The green one in fact is you know just sort of taking the value x, delaying it by something and multiplying it by the constant h0 plus h1. There is no filtering, there is nothing else that is going to happen over there. So because of that, this kind of behavior where you just introduce a new uh, element on one edge alone actually changes the behavior and gives you the wrong functionality. It does not give you what you want. Right? So because of that, this picture that I have got with just this one uh, register, this is basically not okay. 
Okay, this is not acceptable and cannot be done as a valid pipelining of this system. On the other hand, let's say that I do something like this. Right? I take a cut right through the system. And effectively what I do is I put a register over here or a delay element over here and on all three of these. Right? Remember that this is E and this is F. Now effectively what I have got at this point is this is producing some B of N, this is producing some E, e right? this has become B of N minus 1, E n minus 1 e n minus 1 right it's almost as though i have taken two parts of the system right the a b and e right and delayed this entire thing so that when it goes into c f and d right The entire right hand side is working on a one delayed version of whatever was coming from the left hand side. Okay. So what have I achieved over here by, by taking this green line and putting registers or delay elements on all the edges that it cut. Right? I have basically managed to delay the entire right hand side by one time unit, one sample with respect to the left hand side. Okay. By doing this. I am effectively saying that, you know, I am going to guarantee that, I mean, I'll, by doing this and the fact that, you know, all of the elements over here are time invariant by themselves, the overall behavior of the system, whatever transfer function that it is implementing does not change in any way. Okay. Can I take this further? Yes, I could also probably find one more, you know, green line like this basically cuts these edges again. And by putting sort of the delays over here as well, I get once again correct behavior. Right? So this part over here corresponds to n, these two correspond to n minus 1, and this corresponds to n minus 2. Right? What do I mean by corresponds to n minus 1, etc.? You can almost think of it as this is a sort of all of these are corresponding to one set of samples that are being computed by the graph, right? At any given point in time, the A, B and E are computing something corresponding to the nth iteration, C and F are computing something corresponding to the n minus 1, while D is computing something corresponding to the n minus 2. Okay. Each of these green lines is something called a cut set. What is a cut set? A cut set is essentially something which it's a set of edges in the graph that if you remove those edges, the graph is completely divided into two disjoint portions. Okay. In other words, removing this first green line over here, right, will separate the graph such that the ABE is on the left hand side and the CFD is on the right hand side and they have no edges connecting them. All the edges that were connecting them have been removed. Similarly, by removing the uh, CD and FD edges, the D has been separated out into another portion. Right? So each of these green lines that I'm drawing over here is a cut set. Right? And so is this, you know, this third line that I have drawn over here is also a cut set. Right? So what I'm saying in other words is every time that you have a cut set, you are effectively separating out portions of the graph where by adding delays on each of these uh, edges that is cut, you are delaying from the input to the final output by the same amount and therefore you can effectively say that you know the final output is only going to be a delayed version of what it would have been without all of this pipeline registers. But there's one catch. What is that catch? Let's look at this cut set. 
right so this red line over here this is also a valid cut set right but it's not valid for pipelining okay. now why is that right so in order to understand this let me just redraw this graph here right effectively what we can say is this cut set that I have says there is a e, A to E, right? And then on the other side, there is B, C, F, and D, right? Leave out all the green lines. I'm not looking at whether they have been cut or not, right? So what I have effectively got is this is what has resulted from this cut set right now let me draw the edges that were cut a to b goes like this okay e to c also goes like this but if i look at the edge from b to e this is going in the reverse direction right so the two edges from a to b and from e to c are going in one direction across the cut but this one the b to e is basically going in the reverse direction across the cut now how do i decide which one is forward which one is reverse it doesn't matter you pick one right you just decide that one of them is the forward direction one of them is the reverse direction if there is ever an edge where you know one of the edges that is being cut is going in the opposite direction to the others it means that there is a problem right why is this a problem because you remember in the previous picture i basically told you that you know you can think of this as uh, a b e as being in sort of zone n c and f are in zone n minus 1 d is in zone n minus 2 they are all corresponding to those iterations that they are doing computations now if i have this situation over here what do i do right what can i say about the relationship between b and e Right? I can if I say that A and E are, for example, working on N, and B and others are working on N minus one. Effectively, that blue edge is saying that something that B is computing in N minus one then needs to be used by E for N. Right, which is a problem that is sort of violating whatever I expected from this entire uh, system. Right, so this red line, in other words, has a reverse direction edge and hence is not a valid cut set right all the others the green ones are valid okay. now why have i drawn so many green ones because what was my original goal i wanted to bring down my critical path from six to as small a value as possible and the question that i'm interested in is what is the smallest value that i can get away with right. this in is probably the smallest that i can get away with right all of these are basically valid cut sets Right. So this one over here, if you notice this, right, this thing over here, which cuts across, which uh, which you know takes A B on one side and E C F D on the other side, is actually a valid cut set because I make sure that all of these edges you know are sort of going in the same in one direction across the cut. It's not a question of whether it's top to bottom, left to right, or whatever it is. With respect to the cut, are they going in the same direction? Okay. The other thing that you will notice is that as a result of doing this, I end up with two pipeline registers over here. Right. Similarly, two pipeline registers over here, and so on. Right. So there may be a situation where I need to add more than one delay on a given edge to make sure that the corresponding samples are all getting delayed by the same amount before they reach the final output. Okay. Now, if you go through this graph, you will see that you know as a result of adding all of these different pipeline registers, I have ensured that 
the critical path has come down to one. That is, at any given point in time, only one of these functional nodes is in the critical path. After every one of these functional nodes, there is at least one register. There may be more than one register, but there is at least one. Okay. So in this way, this is the optimal pipeline in the sense that it has brought down the critical path right, to one. Is it optimal in the sense that this is the minimum possible number of registers? That I don't know. In fact, I have not looked carefully at it. There may be some other set of cuts that you can come up with, which would give you the same result with even fewer registers. Okay. So the pipelining, in other words, is not unique. There could be other cuts as well that give you a similar number of registers or an equal number of registers. And you know there may be multiple ways by which you can get to the same critical path. 